Hello, everybody. All right, so we're going to be getting our discussion and um, learning of fractions. We're on lesson 8.1 on page 321 of the third grade Go Math textbook. And our title is Equal Parts of a Whole. And our essential question that you should be able to answer at the end of this lesson is What are equal parts? of a whole. All right, so let's look at the unlock the problem. Lauren shares a sandwich with her brother. They each get an equal part. How many equal parts are there? So what do we need to find? How many equal parts there are? How many people share the sandwich? Lauren and her brother. So there's two. Two people are sharing the sandwich. All right, so we have to understand what they mean by parts of a whole. So each whole shape below is divided into equal parts. A whole is all of the parts of one shape or group. Equal parts are exactly the same size. So here I have one square and they divided it into two halves. Okay, so there's two halves. Here I see three equal parts and we call that thirds. There's three thirds in this hole. There's two halves in this hole. You'll see this written as a fraction like that with the two over the two. Three thirds, you would see it written as three over three. And we read it as three thirds. This one is broken into four pieces, four equal parts, and we call that four fourths. And so as a fraction, it would look like that, four out of four pieces. Sixths. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six sixths. And then this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight equal parts. That's why it's called eighths, because there's eight equal parts in the whole. So eight eighths is shown in that drawing. All right, so Lauren's sandwich is divided into halves. So how many equal parts are there? There's two equal parts. All right, so no problem there. Now, draw a picture to show a different way Lauren's sandwich could have been divided into halves. Okay, so let's say we have our square, right? Okay, and so the picture shows the sandwich drawn diagonally. Um, the halves in the on the book page shows it horizontally, but I could also divide it vertically. So that would be halves. So if you took the square and divided it vertically, we would have two equal parts. Okay. You could draw the diagonal a different way. All right, so as long as you come up with two equal parts, the, each piece has to be the same in order to be called a, a half. All right, page 322. Tell whether the shape is divided into equal parts or unequal parts. All right, so 
does this shape have four equal parts or four unequal parts? Well, when I look at the size of these, rec these squares, they all look exactly the same to me. So there must be four equal parts. And I go to B, and this is called a hexagon, and I see one, two, three, four, five, six triangles that all look the same to me, or they look like they're equal parts. So six equal parts. All right, now this pentagon, it's been divided with a vertical line, and so they're saying this is one piece and this is another piece. Well, those aren't equal, are they? No, so two unequal, not the same. Okay, so an error alert. Some students will say, okay, yeah, I have thirds. It's got three pieces, but they're not equal. Okay, fractions, each part has to be an equal amount. Okay, so this one would be called three thirds. This is not three thirds. Okay, number one. This shape is divided into three equal parts. What is the name for the parts? Well, three parts are called thirds. Okay, and we should be able to spell the word correctly, so take your time to make sure you spell it right. Number two, <clears throat> write the number of equal parts, then write the name for the parts. All right, so one, two, three, four, right? Four equal parts. Fourths. Two equal parts. Would be halves. Number four. How many equal parts are there? I see four on each side. They are the same size triangles. So eight. Equal parts are called eighths. <clears throat> Number five, write whether this shape is divided into equal parts or unequal parts. Well, when I look at this triangle here, and compare it to this triangle. Those aren't the same size, are they? So this has to be unequal parts. All right, now this one, they look like there's four equal parts. So I'm gonna say equal. And then seven, this triangle is definitely not the same shape as the bottom section, so unequal. Unequal parts. All right, number eight. Write the number of equal parts, then write the name for the parts. Well, I see three equal parts, and something with three equal parts, we call those. thirds. In this next shape, I have three at the top, three on the bottom, so that's six equal parts. And what's the name for something with six equal parts? Sixths. Number 10. Well, I see two parts to that. And so we call those halves. There's two halves. 
Number 11 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 equal parts. And something that is 8 equal parts in a whole is called eighth. Okay, so remember what we're naming here are the number of equal parts in the whole shape. Here, the outer border is the whole shape, and the shapes that we have inside are the equal parts. This one has four equal parts, and so its name is fourths. Okay, and this one I see one, two, three equal parts, so it is broken into thirds. Simple as that. 14. Tell whether these are equal or unequal parts. Well, these all look the same. So those are equal parts. 15. Those also look to be all the same. So equal parts. And 16, though, if I look at this piece, Compared to that piece, they're not the same, are they? So those are unequal. Okay, 17. Draw lines to divide the circle into eight eighths. Okay. Take your circle and divide it in half. Take that half. and divide it in half. We now have four pieces. Draw a line through those. We now have six pieces, but they're not equal. And go right through the center again. And we have eight pieces, okay? So eight eighths. 18. Thomas wants to divide a square piece of paper into four equal parts. Draw two quick pictures to show what his paper could look like. All right, so let's draw a square. And we need two of them. Okay. All right, so divide the square piece of paper into four equal parts. Well, I think I'm going to go diagonally. So that's two. But if I take those halves and divide them in half, I would get four pieces. Okay, so I have four equal triangles. So that's one way. I could also just go four sections, okay, and so those would be fourths. 19, use the picture, okay, so we have pan A and pan B. Mrs. Rivera made two pans of corn casserole for a large family dinner. She cut each pan into parts. What is the name of the parts in A? One, two, three, four, five, six. Alex said his mom divided pan B into eighths. Does his statement make sense? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, there are eight parts, but are they equal parts? No. This part's much bigger than that part. 
part. So, no. So if they're not equal parts, we can't call them eighths. <laughs> Number 21, explain why the rectangle is divided into four equal parts. Well, if we just look at this center line, doesn't that divide the large rectangle into two equal sections? It does, right? So the vertical line in the middle splits the rectangle into two equal parts. Then if I take that square and divide it in half and do the same thing to the other one by drawing a line right through the middle, all four of these pieces are the same. Okay, so the large rectangle is divided into two equal parts. The squares are then divided in half, so they each have two equal parts. And so there's a total of four equal parts. Shakira cut a triangle out of paper. She wants to divide the triangle into two equal parts. Draw a quick picture to show what her triangle could look like. Okay. Well, we know a triangle has three sides. Okay. So if that's my triangle, I need two equal parts. Well, I could take a, from this point and draw it straight down. I could take this point and draw it straight across. I could take this point and draw it straight across. So there's three different ways we can make two equal parts. So just choose a corner and draw a line straight from that corner to the opposite side's base. And 23. Parker divides a fruit bar into three equal parts. Circle the word that makes the sentence true. The fruit bar is divided into thirds. Three equal parts equals thirds. So that's all there is to that with naming of the parts. In our next lesson, we're going to be talking about equal shares. And so we'll continue with our discussion of fractions then. So until then, may the numbers always be in your favor.